What do you think so far, Joan? It's a big ship. It is a big ship. It is definitely a big ship. Quite amazing, really, when you think about it. Just stepped outside of the uh, ticket center. There it is, the USS Alabama. Look at that thing, it is absolutely massive. Oh, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. This is gonna be fun, fun, fun. Look at that monster. That is something else. Well, we've got a lot to see today, Joan, don't we? Yes, we do, and yeah. I'm gonna have to put my sunglasses on. Yeah, it is. It is bright. It is bright. It's a warm, warm, warm day in mobile but uh we're gonna see a lot of things today we're gonna see this massive battleship i've wanted to do this for almost four years now we were here before and didn't get to take the opportunity and then as you look over here we've got the aircraft pavilion to go through and then the uh, uss drum which is a um, submarine that we're going to get to go see on the deck of the USS Alabama. Oh, this thing is massive. Uh, the insides are just absolutely incredible. It's bright, it's sunny. Bear with the sunglasses. <laughs> but uh, I can't wait to show you some of the things here on the decks. Everything from the big massive guns to just the simple anti-aircraft guns at the head here. Well, I call them simple. They're anything but that. What a place. Look at the size of these guns wow just to kind of give you an idea of the size there's joan reading one of the plaques these things are massive i'm sure i'll get more information as we go on in and look at some of the other things around here and they've got this bad boy decked out i mean look at this these are something there you go there's a great view look at that seems are spectacular and I walk over here and show you the rounds that they shot in them. They are massive. Now, if you want to see what these guns shot, there it is. Want to interrupt your morning coffee? That will definitely do it. All 2,700 pounds of armor piercing. That is one bad boy, 16 inches in diameter. That traveled at... 1,568 miles per hour and would go almost 21 miles from the face of the gun. Wow. That'd run your day, wouldn't it, Joan? Ooh, Ooh mercy. All right, let's see what we can find inside. And off we go for the tour. And hopefully some air. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yay. One of the things they highlight here is all the different raids and battles they were in, uh, Gilbert Island, Holland, uh, just very, very substantial World War II battles that they fought, Marshall Islands, Okinawa, Western Carolinas, Carolines, and then the operation against Japan, all very detailed. Here is a um, gun director for the 40 millimeter anti-aircraft guns. Uh, we've just started touching the surface of this. We just left the theater. Uh, once when you first come in, I would really recommend you do that. It gives you a lot of history about the ship and really you get to hear some of the people that actually were crews on the ship and that was really, really interesting. We're gonna go down through some of the ward rooms and see how people actually lived during this period. This is interesting, I'll do this. This is um, one of the rooms, and I can't tell from the directions that we've got, the information, whose room this might have been, but you can see the small office. I'm gonna take a guess, this was probably an officer's quarters of some sort. 
These are officer staterooms. You can actually take a peek in. And you can see what they were like. Small, two bunks in this one. Uh, the one you just saw only had a single bunk. Look at that. Here's another really good view of an officer's stateroom. This one actually has a porthole to the outside, a little different than some of the others that we saw. All right, now we're gonna to try to manage the steps here. Oh, wow. Post office. Look at this. They actually had a post office here on the ship. Amazing. More of the belting. Oh, here we go. Now we're starting to see where people live. This would have been one of the sergeant's quarters. You can kind of see that. And then the bunk area here. So this would have been the area where the Marines who were on this ship, this is where they lived. And they have everything from bunks to tailor shop. They have their own, own place here. Interesting. So this massive round thing, aside from these, these are spare 40 millimeter gun barrels that they stored, but this massive round thing, that was the huge gun turret. I'll try to just kind of get back here so you can just see this thing. It's just, just a huge, massive room just for the gun turret. Wow. Wow. Okay, we're getting ready to go down to the third level now. Oh, these steps are steep. So this area here would have been ship communications. They call this coding. Coding and compressors. And then I think over here is the radio room. Oh yeah. So here's all the radio communications. Look at that. Look at that. Radio Central is the way it's labeled. Well, these things were self-contained. We just saw in the uh, video earlier where one of the seamen had had their tonsils taken out, but they had dental facilities on the ship. Isolation ward, don't know why I'd want to be there. And we're getting into more of the mechanics of the ship. This was the uh, hospital ward. They call it sick bay. And then the operating room. Look at that. Look at this, this was the dispensary. Amazing thing that I find about this so there was 2,500 people here, 2,500. Joan and I have lived in towns that were smaller than that. Look at this. It literally was a floating city. Clerical offices. And the doctor has to have his office. The doctor's office. Look at that. Now, this is the where they call the Shellman. This is where they lived. This is those several thousand pound, 2,700 pound shells. Look at this. Rooms of them. And this is where they sent them up. Look at that. Amazing. Just simply amazing. Look at that. Just rooms of them. Well, we're gonna go down these spiral stairs. Let's see what's down here. Oh, now we're really getting into something. Look at this. Oh, this is the powder room. 
This is where they sent the powder up. We saw that in the video down below. You can actually see where the powder was sent up to the individual turret guns. Look at that. What a, what a spectacular feat of engineering. See, there's the, you can see it, it's round up here. This is where the turret actually turned. This massive, massive thing. I think this too is where they kept additional shells bolted in, strapped in. But you can just, the smell, I bet this smell's been in this thing for 50, 60 years. Oil, powder, wow. Now this is interesting, this is called Central Station. They could actually steer the ship from here. We actually saw that in a video. Steer the ship from here, they had compasses and gyroscopes and all kinds of things here. And I don't know if you can make it out just over that big compass there. You can actually see the steering wheel, interesting. Oh, this is interesting. This is called the Combat Center. Look at this. Let's see some radar. I see a lot of radar. Yeah, uh, over there, the big round, round thing is your plotting table. Mapping areas. Look at that. Now, one of the things that's really interesting about these massive gun turrets, um, they actually had gyroscopes and something called stable elements and you're seeing a room room full of equipment so no matter how the uh, ship pitched or turned the guns always stayed on target i find that again i was in the air force and surface to air missiles and worked on something <laughs> much smaller but just always fascinated with this type of uh, engineering that goes into this here's even more of it in this room here it is a very substantial piece of equipment to uh, keep these guns aligned and quite sizable, very talented individuals who maintained all this equipment. I can assure you, I went to school for a year just on how to manage our computer and guidance systems. Look at this, just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Wow. I mean, this is World War II. World War II. That's quite a computer there, I'll tell you. Amazing. Now we're now going down to a fourth level, fourth deck. We're actually going down into the engine room. This is an incredible maze. I don't know how I'm gonna ever get out of here. Wow, wow, wow. These things were steam driven. I heard correctly in the video these were steam driven turbines look at this oh you can actually see inside look at this try to get the camera over there look at the gears Wow! how neat is that and it goes down even another level but we can't do that We've got it locked off. It just goes on and on. look down in there. Oh, I know you can't make it out in the video, but it's just absolutely just a maze of massive, massive equipment. What an engine. Here's something we saw in the video that was kind of interesting, I thought. And I'm actually going to be able to go over here and see it. This was, uh, I don't remember which wheel was which, but one made the ship go forward and one made it go backwards. And just look at this, all mechanical gauges. Just, can you imagine, look at just the, the plumbing and the wiring in this place. It is absolutely incredible. Wow. All right, I see steps going up. I'm gonna start trying to see if I can find my way out of this maze. See if I can find Joan somewhere. More gun loading here. This is for the five inch guns. Interesting. 
And there would be the shells for the five inch guns. The rooms are endless. The amount of people that it took to manage this ship. This was the captain navigator's office. I'm sorry, so many of these windows are a tidbit financial division is supply office safes I got a feeling that was cash look at that adding machines yeah this is the money guys every square inch of this place is used it doesn't matter what post is here what piece of plumbing was available they could put a debt desk and a rack in it they did that look at this every square inch not one speck of space wasted here's a crew rack area i just want to show you how small this is oh my goodness all right so eight people slip in these small confines and uh, the racks are folded up there but they were maybe maybe two feet two feet apart you are in close confines here look at that wow this is the butcher shop you can actually go into part of this look at this <laughs> you can see a, a picture of the butcher there look at that look at that amazing we're in the kitchen area they're piping in some sound here. That's not really happening, but you can see where everything was cooked. The massive pots. I think I think I saw in the video they did their coffee pot was 320 gallons. So you can see where the enlisted ate. And you can see where these fine semen ate and lived. Amazing. And if you were a bad boy, that was your temporary brig. Oh my goodness. That was a reason to behave because everybody got to see you when they came for chow. That's called peer pressure. More bunk area. CPO mess, Chief Petty Officer's mess quarters. They had tables. And it looks like the CPOs, Chief Petty Officers, had their own kitchen. Look at that. Look at that. A little bit different. Oh, like this, a ship store. Look at that. Where you could get your essentials. Tobacco was king during that period. All right. Oh, this is interesting. Look at this. They had a soda fountain in here. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. Wow. Look at that. And as with all things mechanical, things break. Very substantial machine shop. Very, very, very substantial machine shop. Lays and drill presses and stuff I'm not sure what it is, but it is big. Look at that, even, even electronic repair right there in front. All right, well, we've been inside looking. It's noisy, I apologize for that, but we've been all over, or at least I have. Joan took a break and I went down in the bottom. We're getting ready to go back out on the front of the ship, just kind of walk around on the outside. And uh, there is uh, Mobile Bay. I think this is called the starboard side. I'm not a Navy guy. There's your five inch guns. I wonder if we can go up top here. I can't tell. We can. Well, this is gonna be interesting. Joan's gonna take another break. Her knee is not gonna let her do this. But uh, we're going to go and see what's up top here. Looks like we can take advantage of that. I don't know how far we could go or what we can see, but we're going to try. It's your five inch guns. 
And we're gonna go higher. More five inch guns. All right, let's continue to go up. Oh, here we go. Now we're starting to find something here we can see. Oh, this is the battle bridge. Can we go inside? No, closed. Oh, the battle bridge. Oh, I hope we could go inside. Maybe we can get in from another direction here. Let's see. Yay, we can go inside the battle bridge. I was hoping we could. Now here's the interesting, look at this. This thing was reinforced. Look at the thickness. Look at the thickness of this, wow. I guess this was being protected by shells, but this was your battle bridge. Wow, 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 wow. All encased in some substantial armament. Interesting. Another view. And then here would have been the uh, sea captain's chart house. Look at that, sea captain's chart house. Interesting. And his, um, his cabin. And I don't think we have access to, to continue to go up to the top. Oh, we do. I just gotta figure out how to get up there. Look at that. Well, this is as high as it'll let us go. Ooh, what a lot of exercise. Looks like more navigation here. Yep, I see wheels. And uh, I think we've got a view out here. Oh, look at this. View of the bay. And there's, uh, there's how high we are. Look at that. That would have been the view from the bow. Something. Well, here's a view you don't get every day. What it would have been like to sit behind an anti-aircraft gun. Look at that. And then as we head back down, You can see your five inchers down there. And more anti-aircraft gun right over there. Well, we went up there a little ways and looked at some things. We're just gonna go back here and see where the big guns are at. See what that looks like. What do you think so far, Joan? It's a big ship. It is a big ship. It is definitely a big ship. Quite amazing, really, when you think about it. And we have a bunch more to see. We've got the museum to go into with all the aircraft, and I think I'm gonna mosey over and see the sub wheel prick, too. Watch your step. Well, we've just come off the uh, ship, and now we're gonna go into the Medal of Honor Aircraft Pavilion. And uh, I'm looking over here in the distance. Can't wait to look at this thing. They've got an SR-71. And then we're going to go look at the submarine, the USS Drum. That'll be fun. Well, we're inside the Aviation Museum here. AD-4 in Sky Raider. And look at all this stuff. Nice, right up about the Tuskegee Airmen. Look at all this. It's pretty neat. So you've got everything from World War II and further conflicts as time went on. What is this? Oh, this is interesting. Look at this. An Army One. Look at this. It's pretty cool. 
I'm going to let you see all the different aircraft that are in here. They're quite substantial. And we are going to go to the USS Drum in just a minute. Really is a nice mix of aircraft they have in here from this Coast Guard helicopter. There's some of the jets that the Marines used. Here we go. Navy. Look at that. And a riverboat. And I actually have a friend who was on one of those for the Coast Guard in the Vietnam War. Look at this. Something else. Let's see what Jones found over here. Well, you've heard of PT boats. This is a PB MK3 boat. I think they refer to these as patrol boats. But you can see those here. How about that? There's another view of the PB boat in the bay. Look at that. Look at the props. Back in the back, there's the drum, you see it? It's also a substantial amount of aircraft here that one I'm really, really interested in. I've never seen one. If you look over there, that black thing is an SR-71. Let's see what we can find on the drum here. Interesting thing I find, they actually had anti-aircraft guns on these things. I didn't realize that. That looks like about a five-incher. 40 millimeter. All right, let's go down, see what we can find here. Coming off the steps, this area is small, 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 small. There's not a lot of room. Matter of fact, this is the most room I think we'll have in the whole place. Um, these are Mark 14 torpedoes. One, you can see they had them in racks here. And they're showing two here. And then there's your torpedo tubes. It looks like they had one, two, three, six of them. And you can see the two top, one of them's open here. Interesting. What's going down this way? Something is going to be, I want to show you this. This was the uh, officer's washroom and shower <laughs> in the head. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, this is so narrow. Let's see if we can do this without bumping our head. Okay. So this would be some officers. I don't know, it doesn't designate who they might have been, but their quarters. And this would have been the officer's wardroom. This would have been where they took their meals. You can see that here, it's so small. Here's, a, here's another view. Officers' quarters here. Now come back up here. This is the captain's cabin. And a few things you'll notice here. You had just a tad more space, not much. Not much. In his desk area. Chief Petty Officer Bunk Room, five men. Look at this, small, small, small. Notice how all the sinks fold up. Two bunks here, small desk area. Three bunks here. Wow, this was tight. Really quite amazing when you think about it. And the ship's office. See if we can go through here. Oh, now we're starting to get into the heart of the operations here. Look at this. 
plotting room, steering. Look at all this. More gauges, more dials than I can even begin to imagine what they did. Look at all this. So this is the control room where they steered it, made it go up and down. Here's the radio room. Small, small space. Another little bulkhead here. Oh, let's see if we can do this. Sooner or later, we're gonna to get to the kitchen. Here we go. Small little kitchen area. And where the enlisted took their meals, cleaned up afterwards. So as you look here in the kitchen, where's the refrigerators? That's a good question. If you notice this, you had to go down this hatch and down in the bottom, you may be able to make it out. The refrigerators at the bottom and the freezers next to it. Isn't that something? And here's where the enlisted men bunked. Look at this. Small, small space. This would have been the crew's head. One toilet. One small shower and sink. Oh, here's the shower. There's the shower area. And it looks like a wash machine. That's right over there. And I got a feeling we're going to be making it back here to the engines. So here's your engines. Look at this. Twin engines. Just an amazing, amazing amount of dials and gauges and everything. Look at this. It's going through here. Another part of the engines. Oh, you can actually see the crankshaft. Look at this. And the pistons. Look, there's your size of the pistons. Engine air take, engine air intake silencers. I guess that's important on a submarine, huh? This looks like a lot of electric. Main electric contract contactors. Look at that. So this would have been where they controlled all the power to the batteries. Look at that. And here you can see where they controlled the different motors, port motors, generators, battery selectors, more generators. Look at that. Something, huh? This is a this is the the back. I think they would call that the aft. And the aft torpedo tubes. And more torpedoes, which makes me wonder why do we see bunks here? Maybe, maybe this is where they slept when they weren't firing torpedoes. Amazing, and that is all there is to it. We're at the very back, we can't go any further. Look at this, quite, quite the sight to see. I'll turn around just a little bit. Well, that's the USS Drum, how about that? That's really something. It's a short walk, it doesn't take you long to go through a submarine. But um, that, was, that was a fun tour. That was pretty neat to see. All right, we're gonna go find Joan. Maybe check out a few of these airplanes that are out here. This has been a cool, cool tour. I like this. Now, if you wanna see something amazing, this is it. Friends and neighbors, this is not something you see every day. There's a SR-71 spy plane. Look at this. This thing looks like a, like a rocket. 
with massive engines on the back of it. Look at this. Isn't this spectacular? How in the world they got this here, I will never know. But that is an amazing piece of machinery. Wow. I think they've been decommissioned since we now have spy satellites. I want you to look at the back of this though. Look at the back side of this thing where the where the engines would have been. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I'm going to say that's probably a good uh, four and a half, almost five feet in diameter. What a massive, massive machine. It looks like something from outer space, doesn't it? They got a great video of uh, one of the pilots who actually flew these on the inside of the aircraft pavilion that you see over there. Quite spectacular, really. Look at this thing. Amazing. I love this kind of stuff. If you have never seen a B-52B Strata Fortress up close, this is that monster. Look at this thing. Wow. I have always wondered what these things look like up close. They are absolutely massive. Can't go inside. Which is a shame, really. I'd love to have done that. Look at the engines on this. I'm going to walk up close. Here, let me just turn the uh, camera around so you can just see how big these things are. There you go. You can see it in the background. And there are four sets of these. Uh, two sets on each wing. Massive. Look at this thing. We'll walk under her. This is Calamity Jane. And uh, we'll look and see a little bit of history on her here in just a minute. But just look at this thing, it's huge. And I can only imagine what the payload was like under this thing. You'll find this interesting. There you go. There's the amount of bomb sorties she ran during her active life. Amazing. So here's a little bit about the B-52 that you see here. This Calamity Jane, interestingly, uh, this one's in black. This is the first one I've ever seen in black. Uh, we live near Warner Robins Air Force Base. I remember when they were there, they were all green. But this one's still in black when she was uh, demilitarized because this was the night camouflage used in Vietnam when she flew. That's a big bad girl right there, boys and girls. Look at that thing. Gracious. It's something else. Well, this has been an absolute blast. We have had so much fun doing this today. Joan and I touring the USS Alabama, then me going over to the USS Drum, the submarine. Wow, that was pretty cool. I'm going to put a link here up in the top. And uh, we did this at Patriots Point in Charleston a couple years ago. And uh, if, you, if you like this type of thing, that'll give you another opportunity if you haven't seen those videos. This was so much fun. There's a lot more... A lot more to see here. There's all kinds of planes. I showed you just a couple of those. It's a little bit of a warm day and we just kind of walked out, but there's, we could probably spend another couple hours here just looking at tanks and cannons and everything here. What a wonderful time. So much fun. Wow, we really love RV life.